Yes, dear chairman, dear colleagues, it's a great honor for me to be able to present our data on the question, is there any difference between the natural evolution of a persisting um, dissected distal aorta after type, e, type A repair and the primary type B aortic dissection? On the right, you can see um, the follow-up CT scan two and three years after repair for type A aortic dissection. As you will see here is a continuing dilatation of the downstream aorta after surgical repair for type A aortic dissection. So we can frequently observe this phenomenon. And the same is true for patients with a type B aortic dissection, with, which also often show a progressive aneurysmal expansion of the thoracoabdominal aorta during follow-up. In previous studies, several risk factors for that have been um, identified, such as aortic size and thrombosis status of the fast lumen. And we were asking the question whether there was any difference in the follow-up of these patients. So to come back on the rather complicated title, our aim for the study was to see whether there's any difference between the natural evolution of a persisting dissected distal aorta in patients who underwent um, surgery for acute type A repair uh, dissection or patients which presented with a primary type B dissection. In order to be able to, to address this problem, we looked at the 10 years period starting from January 2001 and December 2012 and assessed all patients which were discharged with an aortic dissection from our unit and we were able to identify 247 patients who had underwent uh, surgery surgical repair for acute aortic dissection type A, and in the same period of time, 112 patients were um, treated for an acute type B aortic dissection. We looked at the follow-up and concentrated on the need for any kind of re-intervention during follow-up time, which could have been surgery or TVAR, within the aortic arch and the thoracoabdominal aorta. We included patients who had a CT or MR angiography at time of discharge and at least one during follow-up. And assessing these um, CT or MR scans, we were looking at the status of the primary entry tier, deciding whether it was still open or closed, patent versus non-patent, and looked at the patency of the fast lumen and divided it in three groups, a profused fast lumen, fully or partially thrombosed <coughs> fast lumen. From this analysis, we um, excluded the following patient groups, all patients with a known connective tissue disease, such as a Marfan syndrome, patients treated for an acute um, aortic syndrome, such as uh, penetrating aortic ulcer or intramural hematoma, and all patients who were um, treated for traumatic aortic injury. Looking at the results of the whole cohort, um, the median age of the patients was 62, the large majority of patients with an aortic dissection are men, um, almost 80%, and hypertension that we just heard about was present in almost all patients, 94%. And um, as I said before, 247 patients, so roughly 70% were treated for a type A aortic dissection, and 112, 31% for type B aortic dissection. At the time of discharge, the, the primary entry was closed in 70% of patients, and a full thrombosis of the fast lumen was seen in 60% of patients. The follow-up, which was in mean um, almost two years, uh, all-cause death um, was 7%, and the need of, need of re-intervention was, for us, impressively high with 19%. And in 7% of page, patients uh, open thoracoabdominal repair had to be done. Now we divided these two groups according to the entry status. So we looked at a group with a patent entry, still open, and the group of patients where the primary entry tier was, at, had been clo or was closed at time of discharge. You can see that there's no difference of age, 63, 63 years, still almost all men, hypertension, and the one significant difference is that in the groups with the closed primary entry tier, aortic dissection type A was more prevalent with 83% versus 35% in the patients where the primary entry was still open. And this resulted in a patient with a closed entry, the fast lumen was thrombosed in 80%. And this had an influence on the need of re-intervention during follow-up, so you can see that in the patients which were discharged with a close entry, 
the need for re-intervention was 13%, highly significantly lower compared to the patients which were discharged with an open entry, where the need for re-intervention was 32%. The same was reflected in the need for open um, thoracoabdominal replacement, which was in, a in the patient group with a closed entry, 6% versus 16% in the other group. You can see that um, in all this section, the whole cohort, actually you can say that the freedom from re-intervention is significantly influenced by, this, by the entry which is closed or open. And you can see that a closed entry gives you a one and five year freedom from re-intervention of 94 and 82 percent versus of the group with a still open entry of 82 and 61 percent. Now looking at the same question only with patients with, um, who had underwent surgery for acute aortic dissection type A, you can see that the same is true, that the a closed entry gives you a very good freedom um, from re-intervention compared to patients which are discharged an, with an open entry. And this is, again, significantly different. But obviously, it's not true or it's not um, the same situation as patients who were treated for a, or who, or who had a primary type B aortic dissection because we could not find a significant influence on the, on the, uh, free, the need of re-intervention in that group. So from that data, we um, conclude that a persistent distal aortic dissection after repair of type A dissection and the primary type B aortic dissection are totally different in their behavior in follow-up as re-intervention in the thoracoabdominal aorta is significantly higher in patients with a type B aortic dissection. And the patent primary entry tier independently predicts the need for re-intervention in patients with the acute aortic dissection type E, but not in patients with a type B dissection. And at least in our data here, the thrombosis status of the fast lumen did not predict uh, re-intervention rate. And, uh, very importantly, it's, very, it, it's really important to have a close uh, follow-up on the patients who were discharged for our aortic dissection, whether type A and the, uh, type B, keeping in mind that one, almost one in five patients needed any kind of re-intervention. In type A aortic dissection, the main target of initial therapy, besides survival, <laughs> is to close the primary entry tier. And Besides um, optical medical treatment in patients with type B aortic dissection, it's still unclear how to best prevent aneurysm formation. Thank you very much. <laughs>